Now, what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to specifically redefine what the word management means. And the way we're going to redefine it is we're going to redefine it using two very similar but distinctly different words that sound the same and many people think they're synonymous. Those two words are function and purpose. To show you the difference between these two words, I'm going to use a medical illustration and I'm going to use the medical illustration of breathing. So we have an organ for breathing, it's our lungs. The function of the lungs is to inspire oxygen and nitrogen, the air, and then expire carbon dioxide. Okay, that is the function of the lungs, but it's not the lungs purpose. When the lungs take in oxygen, that oxygen gets distributed to every cell in our body through our circulatory system, through red blood cells. Why? Because the purpose of inspiring oxygen is to get the oxygen to the cells because every cell in our body requires oxygen as a fuel for the metabolic process by which the cells perform whatever their function is. So for example, if it's kidney cells, well, what they do is they filter out contaminants through our fluid. If it's our muscles or our muscle cells, their function is to move the body. And if it's our neural cells, our brain cells, well, the function of the brain is to give direction to the rest of the body. So there's a difference between function and purpose. So as it relates to management, what we're gonna do is we're gonna redefine the function of management and the function of management we said in the first video is to get employees to be engaged in the functional viability of the company's health and welfare why because the purpose of every company in its most basic form is to create a profit because if a company doesn't have a profit it goes out of business all we have to do is look at Sears now in medicine we talk about etiological causes or root causes and how each of those causes makes a progressional step in a direction either towards health or away from health. We're going to do the exact same thing here. When we look at employees who are not engaged, who are disengaged, who have this psychological disjointed mindset, then the cause and effect that they fail to understand is that if they are not focused on the functional viability of the company, then the company, like the body, is going to suffer. And if the company's viability suffers, then the bottom line suffers. And if the bottom line suffers, well then that's a threat to every individual that's part of that corporate body. In other words, as an employee, if I don't understand what the function of management is, and if I don't understand what my function is, then step by step by step by step by step, what I also don't understand is how my actions, my attitude, and my behavior puts me, the employee, at risk. And this step by step by step cause and effect or series of consequences or a series of etiological causes. In medicine, we call that sequelae. And if you wanna understand sequelae, we have a video and it's called Diagnosing Corporate Disease, Parallels Between Medicine and Management. It's here on our YouTube channel. It's only 17 minutes long. And if you're in senior management, I highly recommend that you take those 17 minutes because it's really gonna help you understand the depths of the psychology and the sociology that's affecting disengagement in your workforce. So when there's disease, sequelae is this progression and regrettably it usually goes from bad to worse. So if you watch that 17 minute video, you're, you're gonna understand how sequelae is these the step by step by step series of effects that lead to a consequence. If we were to look at it, say, as a thumbnail sketch, as a you know, brief narrative, we could say that we're, we're talking about cause and effect. But if you want to see how cause and effect functions in terms of creating disengagement, and if you want to see how cause and effect functions in terms of the psychology and the sociology that leads to disengagement, then all you have to do 
is consider something that you've been able to observe, empirical evidence, every day you work as a manager. And that's employees' lack of thinking something through. In other words, what we see in the corporate world is that if you're in the rank and file, it's almost sometimes like employees act like they're zombies. They show up from eight to four and then the door. They put in their eight hours and they kind of almost robotically go through their steps, but they're not consciously thinking about what they do when they do it. If they were consciously and cognitively thinking about what they were doing, they would make less mistakes. But studies have shown that Mistakes are made because of a lack of cognitive thinking. And as it relates to disengagement, one of the biggest sequelae, one of the biggest effects or consequences of not thinking is if I automatically embrace what my peers, my sociological herd, if you want to call it that, the herd mentality gets embraced by me and I just believe whatever the herd is saying and the herd is telling me that management is bad. And this is where we get the us versus them syndrome. Us is management, them is the workforce. The us versus them syndrome has been studied extensively, but it's still prevalent and it's one of the biggest etiological causes for disengagement. When an employee fails to cognitively think how their actions, behaviors and attitude affect the company's viability, then they fail to think how their actions, behaviors, and attitudes affect their own viability and their own security. In other words, employees are suffering from a sociologically conditioned, dysfunctional mindset that's delusional. It's not based on any fact or any truth. It's based on a belief system and the belief system is an error. What that belief system is, is the employee can show up from eight to four and then the door and come back the next day and the next week and the next month and still have their job. See, all they have to do is physically show up. They don't have to put their energy, emotion, effort into performing the function of their job for the purpose of the company's financial viability. So when we suffer from this type of delusional thinking, what we actually believe is, I don't have to contribute much of anything because I'm still going to have my job next week, next month, and next year. Except that doesn't bear any semblance of truth to the reality of economics. But our employees don't understand that. They have been led to believe that by their peers and by this sociological conditioning that says, you just have to show up. When we think we can just show up, what we're thinking is there's no risk. So here's a psychological term, and this is one of the three major contributors to this whole phenomena of disengagement. The psychological term is complacency. Complacency is a belief that I can be non-engaged, almost not care, somewhat apathetic, and there is no risk. But that's just simply not true. 